Hey everyone, happy Halloween. I hope uh, your weekend is off to a great start. We, oh, there we go, there's Sarah. We welcome everybody to this uh, live um, workshop. We're gonna do a fix your squat workshop. So those of you who have scary Halloween squats where it looks like the Eiffel Tower and your knees are caving in, or maybe you struggle every time you start to go down, you can't get the depth that you want, or you feel like your heels are popping up. You know, these are all common problems. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to start addressing them and hopefully give you some insight into how you can fix your squat and eliminate those feelings of, oh, I just can't do it. All right. So not true. Where there's a will, there's a way. You just need to understand how you can slowly progress it and uh, don't let yourself get frustrated. Right. These things take time. If you have questions, the chat is open. OK. When Sarah's teaching, I'll have my eyes on here and I'll be able to help you guys. OK. A lot of people have asked uh, if this video will be made available on our YouTube channel or if it's going to be in the online gym. It's definitely going to be in the online gym. Whenever we do a free workshop, we always put it for our gym members as well so that they can go back and rewatch any of the recordings just like any of the live classes. All right. So what we are going to do, we are going to start off with Sarah kind of showing you some of the common problems and set you up to test your squat so you can understand how to test it and see what's going on. And then based on some of the possible issues, we'll walk you through progressions and regressions. If you have something that's really a challenge for you in your squat, then make sure that you message us in the chat, okay? Let us know what it is and uh, we'll try as best we can to address that. All right, guys? So without further ado. Hey guys, happy Halloween. Um, so, what I would like you to do right now is before I talk about what a good squat is, right? Because everybody's squat is going to be a little bit different. I want you just to do five squats and hold your bottom position. So however you squat, okay? So I'm going to do my five. And Kai is in the corner helping me. Good, so I'm gonna hold my bottom position and I wanna just see here, do I feel like I have weight on both feet equally? Do I feel like maybe one side's twisting in my hip? Um, do I feel like I can't keep my spine upright? Do I even come as low as I can um, before my heels come off the ground? So there's a bunch of common things that happen here. Okay, so everybody's assessed sort of what's going on. Now what I want you to do you're going to do the same thing, five squats. We're going to put our feet together. So we want to do the same thing we did before, but feet together. So when we do our feet together, though, I want you to notice, can you keep your knees together? What happens to your spine? Does one heel come up? Let's address that or assess that rather. So squatting five times. Go slow and in control, guys, and just go to whatever depth is available to you. Awesome. Holding the bottom. So you guys notice as you're holding the bottom what's going on, then I'm going to show you what's going on with me because then you'll see stuff. Okay. So do you have equal amounts of pressure on both feet? Is one of your heels coming off? Can you get as low as you did with the other conventional squat, we'll call it? Um, what's happening in your hips, what's happening in your spine, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you my first squat again, and then I'm going to show you my feet together squat. The reason for this is sometimes I can hide a lot of things with my conventional squat. I'm not saying we always have to squat with our feet in certain positions. There's a million different types of squats. They're all good for you based off different reasons for different purposes to build different types of strength, right? but I want to assess what's going on in the ankles first. So you'll notice, and I'm going to face backwards, when I squat here, if you can notice what's happening in my weight shift, right? I'm trying to make it obvious here, and I'll hold. So if you noticed, you can give yourself a thumbs up. You can write into us. To see what you noticed. Now I'm going to do it with my feet together and let's see if you notice the difference. It should be more glaring because we're addressing the ankles and feet right now. 
Okay, so same squat, same person. Feet together, here we go. Does everybody see what's happening? And I'm gonna hold it. All right, did you notice? Okay, so what's actually happening is, I have an injury, an old dancer's injury on my right ankle, right? I can really warm it up. Oh, there's a question. I can really warm it up. Yeah, left side. Eric is saying left side. Good, gold star. So left side was much deeper, right, Eric? So I actually have better range of motion on my, on my left side which is why it's way deeper. If I put my heel down on the right side, I'm gonna kind of fall towards that side, but also I don't have full range of motion to squat properly on my right side because of an old injury. It doesn't mean I can't get back there. I'm just showing you guys sort of my issue. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna dress the feet and the calves and the shins because we wanna start opening up some tissue, some possibility, and then we're gonna build some stability. So I asked everyone to have a lacrosse ball or a tuna ball ready for today. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna roll out the bottom of our feet because when your feet are really, really tight, it's hard for you to have a good foundation. So it's hard for you to use your foot like a tripod, right? So when our feet are really tight, we can think about it like this. If my hands were like this all day long, very tight, and I was trying to do stuff all day long, how good would I be at doing those things? Not very good. If I want to open up some possibilities and be able to use my feet more, I have to get my nervous system to relax a bit more, right? So we're going to use a ball just to roll on. Um, you can use whatever you have. It could be a water bottle, a tennis ball. Um, sometimes use a golf ball. So it's up to you. I'm going to show you a particular way in which I want you to roll. Uh, and you should use the ankle or the side that you felt like you might have been twisting on or not putting equal amounts of pressure on. So, I'm okay, gonna... so Sarah's just going to get the balls. I just want to remind you as she's showing you this stuff, <laughs> how to open up your feet, you know, people often will get into the gym and they want to rush to squat. They want to rush to squat, even though they don't really have much of a squat position. If you don't have a position, you can't train it. That should sound simple and that should be, everybody should be nodding their head, but I know it's not as sexy and as fun to sit there and take a ball and work on your feet, but it's absolutely necessary if that's the kind of thing that you need to do in order to get that position. So remember, you can't train a position unless you own that position. And by owning it, that means you can get into it comfortably and with control, okay? All right, so now, good foot stuff. All right, so let's have the camera pan all the way down so you can see my feet. So what we're gonna do is we're going to work on the forefoot, right? So I'm gonna actually sit here to show you guys because I wanna point out things. So we're gonna work on the forefoot here and then we're gonna work on the back of the foot. So the way we do that, and this is not for you, Mr. Kai, he loves all, all fashion tools. <laughs> so the way we're gonna do that is you can do it seated for less pressure or standing, but I wanna make sure I'm laying my toes out and rolling from side to side so I'm trying to touch my big toe down and then my pinky toe down, going back and forth here as I keep myself anchored on the ground with my heel. So you can see right here, right? I have my heel down. I don't wanna just feather dust really quickly here. I wanna open up. So my heel is down and I'm gonna roll and then try to splay my toes and touch my big toe down. And then I'm gonna roll and try and touch my pinky toe down. I can go anywhere from the top of the little bones up here, my metatarsals, all the way down into the center of the foot. So we're gonna do that for one whole minute. If you have questions while we do it, totally ask away, Sean is there to answer them. Um, I'm gonna put the timer on and let's begin. Okay, here we go for one minute. Ideally, I like to do like two to three minutes here. Um, but for the sake of today, so we can get through more, let's just do one minute per body part. <laughs> also, it's really important that you use the timer because if this is, again, something that you're kind of only begrudgingly doing because, you, you know, you watch this and you're like, oh, I probably should do it. You're going to think a minute is uh, like done after maybe 20 seconds. So if you actually use the timer, a minute will be a real minute. 
And that's a good uh, tip for stretching and for any other thing that you're doing that requires time. Use a timer. Don't rely on your internal clock. Your internal clock will lie and cheat just to get you out of doing your homework. So that's been 40 seconds. And sometimes I find a more tonic area, more tight area. And I can take a couple more passes there and just try and move through my toes nice and slow, getting everything out of it. All right. Oh, good camera angle is good. All right, so that's been one whole minute there. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna shift. So now the top of my foot's on the ground and I'm gonna move my ankle from side to side. I can start at the midfoot and then work my way back to my heel, right? So I wanna work here for one minute, again, opening up that tissue. And I'm thinking about the foot splay here still. I'm not just lazily doing this. I'm splaying my toes and I'm moving from my ankle. So we're gonna go for a whole minute. That's been 20 seconds so far. Good, and this workshop really is just to start opening up potential for you to think about how you warm up for squats. Like I said before, I know that I have this nagging injury. It's been like 18 years. And listen, it doesn't hold me back from getting pistols or anything. It just takes me a bit longer to warm up on this side. And I have to do a little bit more homework all the time. No problem. Homework is good. Makes us smarter, builds character. 15 seconds left. You're going to see my little house goblin. There we go. That's Kai making sure I'm doing my work. Five seconds. Three two, one. Awesome. So I just want you to shake it out, walk around a little bit and notice if you feel a difference from foot to foot. So I always like to reintroduce what's happening in my body by walking around a little bit because that's how we get through life. And our feet are our first contact point to the world. Yes, we see through our eyes, but this is how we actually contact the world and connect first. So walking around just reintroduces that into our nervous system. All right. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, you're going to help me? All right, excellent. So what we're going to do now is we're going to address the shins. So I've heard a lot of people complain of shin splints, never work with uh, kids or animals. Um, we're going to work on this leg, Kai. Okay, so what we want to introduce here is can our tibialis here rotate? So oftentimes when this bone doesn't rotate, we're gonna get into a lot of trouble either with the ankle or the knee. So what I wanna just see is, can we bring our arm under here? Our knee is in line with our hip. And I want you to notice, as you move your ankle back and forth here, is there much rotation going on in this tibialis? If it's quite stuck, then we're gonna run into problems because we can't really get into um, great positions with our knee or ankle. So. We're gonna open up this tissue. You can use your ball or you can use your fingers. You're going to feel for the bone right here. And usually I start up top. Sometimes it's a little more sensory rich up here. Um, we're gonna press on the bone, not hard, just like 10, 20%. And then we're gonna to move to the side here. So just moving over to the side and you're going to feel some sensory richness. Excellent. And so you can use your fingers, just going up and down lightly and side to side, opening up that tissue, getting it to relax, and we go all the way down. You can also use the ball, so I like to knead into it. I press and then I knead back and forth. Or if you're a little more advanced or feel comfortable, you can also sit in that shin box or 90-90 position. So we can move, and I use my other hand as I do this rocking motion and get that same kneading. So I want you to go to the most tonic area over here, and we're gonna start there. I usually, again, do this for two to three minutes. We're gonna just do one minute, maybe a minute 30, um, and move our weight down. Um, it can get a little sensory rich near the ankle if you are very tight there too, so it's up to you. Um, don't do this, you can, you can begin. Don't do this to the point where your body's freaking out and going and you can't breathe and you're smashing and mashing things. Basically, we're trying to get our nervous system to accept the fact that we're going to be working on stretching these areas. If we start to bash it, smash it, mash it, whatever it is, and we're not breathing and we're being very tight, we're telling our nervous system that it's not okay. 
So that's not great because I'm trying to open up possibilities, not take them away. So you guys are still going. Um, there's some questions there, Sean. Awesome. So I'm doing it this way. You guys can do it your own way. Oh, okay. I can't really see the screen from here. So <laughs> I feel very tight right here. So I'm just going to spend a little more time. Good. So we got about 40 more seconds left. You stretch where you need it, scratch where you need it. You can do little ankle movements here, not so abruptly that you're kicking the ball off, but sometimes I like to dorsiflex and then point and then roll. Nice, easy movements here. And sometimes I go all the way up, starting from the base. So I like to put this pressure this way, but again, you can be here. And you could be going down this area. Okay, spending more time into the areas that you feel are super tight. Sometimes the fingers are best too to get into those little itty bitty areas that you're like, oh, I just, you know, want to get right in there. And so always think about the right tool for the right job. I'm not dogmatic about anything. Like people are like, oh, it has to be this tool or that tool. I teach kettlebells for a living and kettlebells are not the be all and end all either. Can you get a great workout? Sure. But sometimes uh, it'd be better for you to use a barbell or a dumbbell, right? Or a band. All right, guys, shake that out. So that was our tibialis anterior. We're going to do tibialis posterior, which is on the other side. You're going to, again, feel the bone and then you're just going to push in and we're going to do the same back and forth motion here. You can use the ball or you can switch it to internal rotation in our shin box and do the exact same thing. This can get, you guys can begin. This can get quite sensory rich. And for those people who have trouble feeling this medial foot arch here, the short foot exercise, I find it's a really good wake up, for, especially for myself. It wakes up the bottom here. So sometimes when you're in here, especially if it's very tight, I start massaging into there and I start feeling some sensations waking up the bottom of my foot, which is really great. So I might just go in here today. Ooh, that, that is a wake up call. That is some strong coffee in the morning. <laughs> so we're gonna do this for another minute. Again, if you have questions, ask away. Oh man, that's some sensory richness right there. And so uh, actually Sean had um, an ACL injury recently. And so a lot of his work is on his tibial rotation because that's going to really help bring back some movement into his foot or sorry, his ankle and knee better. Right. We can't always just blame the thing that um, is screaming out. So like, you know, sometimes people are like, Oh, my ankle is this. Well, usually I say it's the victim that's crying out in the culprit somewhere else. Nothing works alone, right? So if you start to feel like, wow, this is waking up the bottom of my foot, or later when we walk around and retest this, you feel like, oh, I can stand straighter. Good. I mean, everything works in connection to each other. So we got about 20 more seconds working down into the lower part here. Awesome. 10 seconds. Whew. Five, four, three, two. All right, shake that out. Walk around for a second. <laughs> Just see what that feels like. So notice as you're walking around, do you feel anything different? Is the way you contact the floor with your foot different? Do you have new sensation in the bottom of your foot that you didn't notice before? This is all great stuff. The more tactile awareness we can bring to our feet, right, and our rest of our body, the more we interact differently with our surroundings. So if like your foot is always stuck, it's gonna be hard for you to know what the rest of your body is doing. If your foot feels more open now, you might notice, hey, my hip is not so tight. And 
lots of other things or I can stand straighter. So the last thing we're gonna do is, and we can do this again a couple of ways, we're gonna open up the calves. So we know that behind here, there's two muscles, right? It looks like a little heart shape, the gastroc. We're gonna just put our thumbs in there and you could do that same meaty motion up and down, in and out, or what I like to do is push my thumbs in, give it a little second or two to just accept my thumbs and then I peel around it. So that looks like this. Uh, you're welcome in advance. <laughs> no, because I know that some of you guys are gonna be like, oh my God, that's horrible. So I'm gonna stick my thumbs in that gastroc area and then just saw back and forth a little bit. And then I'm gonna peel around to the front. And what's great is I get my fingers in here too, and I'm getting both sides of uh, tibialis here, right? So getting in that area and peeling around is one way you may begin. Or if you're using a hard enough ball, I don't want a tennis ball just to be jammed up in there, but um, like a, this is a trigger point ball or a lacrosse ball or tuna ball is great. We can two for one it and get some hamstrings. I place the ball in the center of the gastrox, and then I'm gonna sit back here, oh yes. And then I'm gonna rock my knees, uh, my hips side to side. So from the front, that looks like this. Rocking side to side, really getting into that tissue, breathing, and then other side. So I'm going all the way down the gastroc, but I'm gonna give myself a good 30 seconds in each position, okay? And you can roll it down a little bit more. And I'll sit on an angle here so you can see. Rocking side to side. Awesome. So we go all the way down. Um, if this is too sensory rich, you can just do the finger one. I'm gonna move the ball a little bit more. Again, as you get lower, it might be a little more, uh, again, I use that term sensory rich because the um, joint is smaller down there. So lots of things are intersecting in a smaller portion. All righty, 30 more seconds, guys. And it's a great little hamstring one too. Like if you get all the way back, get a little more hamstring action going on. Awesome. Let's go 15 more seconds. And five, four, three, two. Okay, guys, walk it off. See how you feel if it's any different and go ahead and hit up some squats. See if you feel like anything has shifted a little bit. So for myself, I definitely feel I can put way more weight on my right side and I'll turn around again and I'll do it with my feet together again and let's see if there's a difference. Does anyone see that? Before I couldn't put my heel, my right heel down on the ground. So I'm not saying this is a magic trick. This is just your body getting to accept positions, but it is like Cinderella's coach at midnight. If you don't use it, you're gonna lose it. So we opened up potential and nervous system. We're gonna stretch the ankle a little bit more, but we also need to work on the stability in our foot to open up some more mobility in our ankle. So that's where we have this mobile stable relationship. So we're gonna go foot and ankle, then we're gonna go spine, and then we're gonna go hips, bringing ourselves up for a better squat position. We have a question? Uh, felt a difference, but still stuck at the hips. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So rem remember what I was saying, like one thing is not gonna fix everything, but the key here is you understand we're working from the foundation, from the feet, from the feet all the way up, right? Sorry, even address a little bit the calves. We, we looked at the ankle. So all the way up towards the hips, right? So this yeah. is the great thing. Like I said, right Yeah, there. really tighten the hip flexors. Yeah, 
we're gonna get there, I know. What's awesome is as soon as we fix something, the next thing in line that's tight goes, me, 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 it's my turn. Yeah, you'll even feel it more. <laughs> also, uh, guys, thanks for the thumbs up. Uh, it, it's not only good, you know, uh, because obviously you like the thing, but lets us know like when uh, Cyrus doing something or recovering something, yeah, you click that thumbs up on the video and that uh, gives us an idea that you're understanding. So that's great. And you know, thanks for using the chat, Eric. That's great too. So, okay, we're gonna stretch the ankles a little bit and then we're gonna work on the foot stability, okay? It's uh, really important here that you work to your own level. Again, there's a, a thousand different ways that I can address this with clients, but because I'm working with a general population right now, giving you guys a workshop, um, I want you to err on the side of caution when it comes to things. I don't load things more than I have the capacity to do so. So what that means is if something starts talking to you as we're working, don't push beyond that point. Respect it, okay? Don't get to the point where it's screaming at you. So if you need a chair or the wall to help support you, you're going to go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is work a little bit on our foot arches. We're gonna work on what we call the short foot exercise. So we wanna address this foot arch first. So if you can pan the camera down. So what I wanna do is, and unloaded's a bit easier, so you can do the seated in a chair or on the floor, however you like. I want to see, so I have a nice little flat foot here just cause I hurt my hip a number of years ago. You know, ballet is really hard on the body. <laughs> I do jujitsu now and I have way less injuries. Funny, right? Okay. Thank so you. Thank you, Carolyn. Glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> thanks. Thanks guys for writing in that. That's really good. It's, it's helpful. So otherwise it's like we're Sarah's sitting here talking to a computer screen and I'm, I'm you talking know, to you in the I'm, I'm sitting off the side staring. So yeah, if you're liking something or if you have questions, that's awesome. Please use the chat. So what I want to do is if you can see it's very flat here. So sometimes people's feet just go flat, right? And they say they're flat footed. However, if I pick up my foot, you can see I have an arch here. So I'm not actually flat footed, I just have weak feet, okay? So we're addressing that right now. There's Coach Kai, he always likes getting involved. Um, what I wanna do is think about bringing my big toe knuckle towards my heel. So how I do that is, at first, if you can't feel it, you're gonna pull up your big toe to make sure that you're getting that big toe knuckle down, and then you're gonna just bring the two together. So scooching it together as if you're pulling from the big toe knuckle on the floor. This can be quite hard to do. So you can use your fingers and pull it up and then go flat and then crunch it, flat and then crunch it. So let's try to do 10 like that, all right? So I don't wanna see as you guys are doing 10, this happening. I don't put my big toe down like this because then I'm not creating a real arch. I'm using my big toe in a different way which is not great. I mean, yes, we can use it like that, but not right now because we don't walk around like that. So let's go for three more. And if you can do it without lifting the big toe, that's great. Last one. Okay, holding that arch up, we're going to do some little um, intrinsic foot work. So I have my big toe down here and my pinky toes up. I know we're playing footsie this morning, guys. There. I'll make my wink obvious. Okay, if I can't, I'll use my fingers, pushing my big toe down, pulling my little toes up. And then what I wanna do is shift, put my pinkies down and pull my big toe up. So going back and forth 10 times. Try as best you can not to use your fingers, but if you need to, you can suggest that they go up. We have, uh, that's impossible. Okay, impossible spells I'm possible right? <laughs> so if your toes are really stuck together, what you can do is use a sock because we want to get more foot splay here. So you guys keep working on your feet. Here's your quick and dirty, uh, quick and easy toe spreaders. I weave my sock between my toes and that gives me more foot splay. And then I can use my fingers to pull my big toe up, push my pinky toes down and then vice versa. So sometimes getting the toe spreaders in there, especially if you have bunion and your big toe is going outwards, we wanna really make sure that the big toe is in line with that medial arch, okay? So let's go for two more. While you're doing it, can you maybe just give them a little insight into what this will translate to uh, in terms of the squat? How is this gonna help Absolutely. the squat? Absolutely. So why this helps the squat is, 
we have a tripod in our foot, right? So we have this medial arch, this lateral arch, and then we have a top of the foot arch. If our feet are flat, as you guys are going, if our feet are flat and they're not arches are not on, what kind of happens is I get lazy hips and my, my knees could dump in. And if you look at me from the back, right? So lazy feet, you see how it doesn't look powerful? I almost round my lower back as well. When my foot arches are on and I can feel that grip, I get tall from the ground up. I almost feel like I'm growing from the center. And as I squat down, everything is supported. My hips, my knees, my back. So that's why the feet are really the foundation first. I will address the spine and the hips a little bit too. Um, so how's everybody feeling with our little intrinsic footwork? Thumbs up if you understand. Cool, I'm just gonna take a sip of water and then we're gonna warm up the ankle, but in relationship to uh, keeping our foot arches on. So I know that this is your first day doing all of this stuff and it feels like it's really hard. I mean, this is why I have so many programs. They're little mini movement snacks you can do throughout your day because it's not like you're going to change 30 plus years of, of, I don't want to say bad habits, but of working the way you have been in one hour in one day, right? If that was the case, then everybody would be perfect all the time. This is like learning how to speak a new language or play an instrument. If you don't practice a little bit each day, you lose it. So I like to do what I call movement snacks throughout my day, right? So I purposely didn't do any movement snacks before teaching you guys today. So you can see like, yeah, coaches have issues too. But a couple little movement snacks before I go to squat gets me into a better position. If I do a little bit of movement snacks every single day, where would I be in a week? And then where would I be in a month? And then where would I be in a year? So you have to, you know, give your body a break and your mind a break. Just do a little bit of this each day. It becomes more and more cumulative, more and more progressive. And then your body starts to own those positions. And it's super important what Sarah's saying. Like, uh, we just got a comment, you know, love the footwork. That's great. And I, I know some people really love this stuff because they immediately see the value. They can uh, feel it also. And other people, they struggle because they're like, oh, I want to get to squatting. But if you look at like when Sarah does a pistol squat or any of those other things that, you know, people kind of covet and really want and they want the secret to it. Well, the secret starts with cleaning up the little bits that get in your way, right? Okay, next. And really the little bits at the bottom of the pan that are all stuck there, you can use them as a nice sauce later. That's the good stuff. <laughs> That's the good stuff. Okay, we're gonna do what we call ankle clocks. So this is where I want you to work. Um, you can have your hands uh, on the back of a chair or on the wall, it's up to you. We're going to keep our foot arch on at all times. So I don't wanna see this collapsing. I also want you to keep a nice straight spine. So no rounding your back here. Um, if you need to, we're gonna come to this position, which is a little bit easier for everybody, okay? So let me explain the whole thing first, and then I'll have you try it with me. So I want you to watch, because the first thing is, I wanna make sure that my jaw, my diaphragm and pelvic floor in a nice three-point stack, if you've taken other workshops with me, you know this is our neutral position. Doesn't mean we don't deviate away from it, but we need to know where the middle is, the neutral position, to be able to control things better. So wherever that feels comfortable for you, right? You're, you can have your hands in the back of a chair or <laughs> hands on the wall, whatever you want. I want that nice three-point stack. My foot is going to be facing forward, okay? I'm not gonna let it go out, and I'm going to use my little tripod stance. So again, have your toe spreaders in there if you want. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to push my hips back like I'm doing a deadlift and place my hands on the floor. I know the floor can seem far away. If you can't get to the floor, your responsibility is to bring the floor to you, okay? It's not rounding into positions and collapsing. So this is where two yoga blocks, the back of a chair is quite helpful too. You can be at more of an incline. So we're pushing our hips back. I'm not rounding. I'm pushing into um, a little more extension even in my um, pelvis. So uh, we want to have our foot flat here. Make sure your um, tripod is on. And we're gonna make small circles here, coming five, one direction, I'm coming forward. So I'll angle myself here. So I'm making sure that I'm angling myself 
coming forward and deeper with my knee over my toes each time, breathing as well. Okay, yes, you are gonna start to feel a nice stretch through this hip capsule. I told you I'd get to some hips and I will get to more. <laughs> but well, there will be other workshops too, just focus on the hips. All right, so let's go five the other way now. I'm staying five here. Sometimes I do a whole minute, right? I'm just giving you guys uh, about 30 seconds here. Making sure your toes are not going to the side, keep them forward. Good. Breathing, that is not my stomach growling. My dog is snoring. <laughs> okay, awesome, shake it out. So for myself, I feel a lot of opening in my hip and I feel a lot of work in the bottom of my foot. And that starts to help open up my ankle a little bit. You might feel it in different areas. Um, everybody's body's a little different, but as long as we're connecting that foot tripod to the floor, you'll see we're growing really tall. You can even try it for yourself and not connect the foot and see what happens. The stretch is not as meaningful. Good. So we're gonna move on to the next little piece is where we're gonna stretch the bottom of the foot this way as uh, to mimic walking. So this was more like the bottom of our squat, right? So you can see I was warming up here and there's the bottom of my squat. Look, it's already getting better. I'm not leaning so far to the left. So now what we wanna do is work on our little, um, how we walk, so how we toe off the ground. So again, coming down to a good position where you can keep a good spinal position. Start with your foot flat, and this can have your hands on a chair again. Press all the way up, making sure you're not rolling your ankle in or out. So pressing all the way up, getting that big toe knuckle down, good stretch. And then I'm gonna come forward here, driving my knee to the ground, not losing it, so I didn't push back here. So drive my knee to the ground, press up and back down. If that's a little bit too much for you, you can just come up here five times and then go here five times, okay? So I'm going to do the whole thing. You use what you need to keep yourself in a good position. So pressing up, driving forward, and as I drive forward, I pull my shoulder blades back, right? I don't round my back, good. Press up, pull forward. You're gonna get a great stretch in the bottom of that foot. A lot of my dancers and gymnasts, you guys keep going because we're so used to pointing our toes, it gets really hard to understand what dorsiflexion is. The first time I tried to sprint after 18 years of ballet, my feet were like, and I'm gonna swear, what the fuck is going on? I did not know how to sprint or run. <laughs> okay, one more, press up and drive forward. Awesome, shake out that foot. I know we're only gonna work with your worst foot today, um, so we have time to get through it all. Then you guys, your homework is to do this on your other leg. Good, are we good so far, guys? Before I move on to our sides? Awesome. So we're gonna do, so this is our little ankle clock. We did the bottom of our squat. We did our little runner's stretch, like we're coming out of the runner's block. And now we're gonna go side to side. So super important here that we keep this foot arch on. The next one is gonna stretch laterally into this area. If you let your foot arch go, you won't feel any stretch. We will again be getting into those adductors in the hips. So you're gonna feel some sensory richness back there. So I'm gonna come forward here so you can see my foot. So what I wanna make sure of is as I do this, I keep this foot arch on. So if you need to pull your big toe up, that's totally fine. I don't wanna see any rolling in the foot. We're gonna keep it flat and stretch through here. So what do we do? Hands can be on a wall or on a chair. I'm gonna go for the ground in a nice hinge position. I drive this medial foot arch down to the ground. I pick this one up and I'm coming out as far as I can. Right, so I am two for one and I'm getting a great stretch here too. Now have your hands on a yoga block, back of a chair, at the wall. You're going to feel the same thing where you need it. So we're going for five, four, three, two, one. Stay here, we're gonna make small circles. So as I'm making the circles, I'm coming forward and back, right? Getting more into the hip, more into the ankle. So I feel this all the way on this side and all the way through my hip capsule um, in the adductors here, or the inside of your leg rather. 
Good, circle the other way five times. Good, keeping a nice straight spine because if we round, you don't get as much. Good, three, two, one. All right, Whew. shake it out. How's that leg feeling? Pretty good? Awesome. So our last little one is going to be, again, Erin on the side of caution. We're getting into our curtsy squat. So if this is problematic and your heel is lifting off the ground and your front foot, please use a chair. Don't load it as much as I am. So I'm keeping my three-point stack. I'll come down to the floor in a minute. I'm going to step behind, keeping my hips forward. I don't want to rotate here. So I only step as far behind as I can maintain my hips as headlights forward and my shoulders. And I'm going to bring my knee forward over my two center toes. So I'm doing a little, what we would call in ballet, a curtsy. I don't want the knee collapsing so far in one direction, two center toes, okay? So we're here, we're gonna go for five, four, three, two, last one, hold your chair or the floor, whatever you need to, just don't do this. Don't be mean to your little knee joint, okay? We're gonna circle five times and I'm trying to push forward as much as I can, knee over toe, keeping my short foot on as I circle other way. So Jeremy's just asking if uh, there's any kind of like, you know, library with these uh, movements. Uh, well, the all of these things are, are um, shown weekly in the... Um, Agatsu online gym classes. So uh, we're working specifically on squat issues right now, but uh, Cyrus classes, um, there's also other um, flexibility classes in the Agatsu online gym. So we address those every week in class to live, help people with their live, yeah, with live. and uh, they're done on Zoom so we can actually see you. Um, we wanted to try and do this one on YouTube to see, uh, you know, the audience and to, to give another platform to reach people instead of always being on Zoom. But those classes are on Zoom so we can see you and we can give you feedback in class. So that's probably the best place. Um, also, we're always addressing, uh, instead of shaking it back, okay. we're, we're always showing different, uh, different things in the different uh, mobility mods that we release. And I know Sarah's planning to put a few more out. So. Um, I also teach all this stuff in the online foundations. So that's, um, it's, you can choose between beginner and advanced. Um, the list of requirements for each level is there. So the online foundations is five days of programming. It goes through six week cycles and you're always working on different skills, right? So yes, I'm always gonna be addressing spine stuff, shoulder stuff, hip stuff. Uh, and the list goes on and on. Like every day there's something different in there for you. You're always getting the proper warm up with mobility, flexibility, stability. And then we work on joint prep right, movement prep, and then we work on our main dish, which could be anything from, you know, suitcase deadlifting to skin the cats, depending on what program you choose. And if you have more questions about that too, feel free to message me directly, sarah at agatsu.com, or you can reach me on social media. So uh, any questions about our little ankle clock that we just did? Are we good? If we're good, I'm gonna continue on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk, oh, let's just retest your squat now. So you just did all this foot and ankle work, a little bit of hip work. We, we flirted with the hips, but we didn't really address them yet. So let's retest the squat and see how it feels. I always like to do something and then see, does it elicit a positive response, right? So if it feels worse, we've gone in the wrong direction. It's like little red riding hood going to her grandmother's house. You have to try something in order to know if you're right or wrong. If she just got to the fork in the road and was like, one way's the big bad wolf, one way's grandma's house. I can't remember, so I'm just gonna sit here and do nothing. And then the sun will go up and the sun will go down and it's been three days and she's eaten all of grandma's goodies and she still hasn't made a decision, right? Sometimes you have to make the wrong decision in order to know what the right decision is. So if it elicits a positive change in the fact that like, oh, it just feels smoother, easier to get into position, awesome, okay? Pay attention to your foot arches here now, no collapsing. So if this elicits a good response, this is what we want. Now we're gonna talk about, oh, we're good? That's good, yep. Awesome. So we're gonna talk about our spinal position. A lot of you guys have taken um, my mobility stuff before. I'm gonna refer to the three-point stack again. 
What I want to think about is my jaw, my diaphragm, and my pelvic floor are always parallel to each other, as if I was hanging shelves, right? So if I'm rounded, it's going to be hard for me to get into a good squat position. If I'm too extended, it's going to be hard for me. I just want that neutral position. So we can use a stick to help us. Sometimes we don't have a stick, right? But I'll give you the quick and dirty with the stick first because sometimes a good target helps you. So if you have a broomstick, and even if you don't, don't worry, you can use your hands in a second. What I like to do is I like to, oh, and I have some hair issues. I like to line up the back of my head, so my C-spine, then the center of my shoulder blades, my T-spine, and then you gotta get a little hungry bum to get it on your tailbone, right? That's your lumbar spine. I will have two natural curves here in my C-spine and lumbar spine, but if you look at me from the side, it's ear, shoulder, ribs, hip, knee, ankle. And if you look at me from the front, it's jaw, diaphragm, pelvic floor, all equal to each other. If you have a broomstick, you can try that. If you don't, use your hands. I like to place them on those three points. So the first one is, where is my head, right? It should be just a little scoop back and parallel to the floor. Where are my ribs, right? Nice and flat, not pulled in or pushed out. And where is my pelvis? So if they all line up to each other, that's exactly what we want. When we squat, we don't want to be shifting so much in so many different ways. We want to try to be able to hold that three-point stack as best as possible. And we do that with intra-abdominal pressure. I won't go into my whole breathing speech here. Um, I have different workshops and everything for that. But what we're going to do is we're just going to use our exhale to create a little intra-abdominal pressure and understand how that works. So I will have you... Just place your fingers, there's your belly button, there's your hip bones, find the mushy bits in between. We all have it, right? <coughs> Excuse me, I was just gonna get you to do that. I want you just to give yourself a little cough <coughs> and feel that little push out, that little reaction, okay? Everybody go ahead and do that. And so that little push out is exactly what we want in order to stabilize. Sometimes we hold our breath to stabilize more but we're still pushing out into those areas. And then right behind, right, in the same area, if I cough, <coughs> I should feel it there as well. So you guys go ahead and do your cough test, making sure you're keeping that three-point stack. What this cough test is doing is it's our natural reaction if we need to expel something, right, if we're choking or if we have, I don't know, a cold that day, we need to get rid of some stuff. So it clears our airway. So what it's doing is pushing in to our little corset muscles. So we have TBA, multifidus, internal, external obliques. We have diaphragm and pelvic floor. So it kind of pushes this way and also helps keep everything this way as well when we hold our breath. So this would be diaphragm, this would be pelvic floor. When we um, want to learn to squat better, we have to kind of fire those, um, I wouldn't say simultaneously, we inhale, diaphragm contracts, goes down, pelvic floor matches it and we exhale, pelvic floor contracts, and then we push out into that cylinder. So we're gonna work on the exhale here because those muscles in the cylinder only work on the exhale. I'm gonna take an S breath. So lying on your back or standing up or seated like I am, you're just gonna take a deep breath in, keeping your three point stack, and then go and see if you can push into those four points, front and back, and feel that little tonus. It's not like, it's not like you're lifting 300 pounds here, but you should feel that it's pushing equally in all directions. So let's go ahead and do five breath cycles. So here. Good, Kai is so loud. I hope you guys can't hear him snoring. <laughs> And here you go, you're probably at number three. Jeremy had a good comment. He was just saying like, you know, I uh, guess next best thing to uh, coming to Montreal and being able to do weekly classes like this is uh, to join the online gym. So that is absolutely true. Yeah, I teach every Wednesday in the online gym, but we have amazing, these are all my peers 
the teach in the online gym. They're all the senior instructors of Agatsu. Well, you also um, teach more than just once. Yeah, I, I teach all the specialty workshops too with Sean. So did you guys feel that cylinder sort of light up? That's exactly what we want here. So we're gonna take it to the floor for a second and we're gonna address our hips and what they're doing. And then we're going to take it uh, onto uh, our hands and knees. So when I come to the floor, let me teach you about the pelvis first. Quick and dirty pelvis, okay? So here are my hip bones, here's my pubic bone. When I'm doing this, I wanna make sure here, let me just tuck this in here. I wanna make sure that my hip bones are not in front of my pubic bone, as you can see here. And my pubic bone is not in front of my hip bones. It's neutral. So I'm gonna go back and forth with the heel of my palm placed on my hip bones, my fingertips placed on my pubic bone, and find the point at which it feels neutral. It makes a triangle. It's the Bermuda Triangle. It's always a mystery, but I'm full. These are my jokes, people. Okay, so when we come to the floor, knees are bent. You're going to find your three-point stack, and you're going to use your fingers to make sure that you have a nice Bermuda Triangle. We're gonna take our deep inhale, exhale, pushing into those points. As I inhale, it's like the stick is on my back and I'm addressing, am I moving on my inhale? Am I moving on my exhale? And more in particular, am I moving the Bermuda Triangle? So two more, let's go. Last one. So now what I want you to do with your foot arches on, pay attention, keeping your hands on your Bermuda Triangle, toes are forward, we're gonna do glute bridges and you're going to use your S exhale to keep your spine nice and stable. It looks like this. So you'll notice if you dump on one side and you're not using your glutes, right? Or you're not using your foot, if your foot arches turn off. So inhale at the top again, exhale, come down. So we're going like that, inhale, exhale. I ask you to inhale at the top because I want you to be able to stabilize on an inhale without moving at first. Then when you get better, yes, of course you can inhale. I just inhaled and I kept stable and exhale. Everybody do two more. Find where your weak points are. So all we're doing here is we're connecting all the points. We're asking our body, hey, all that footwork we just did, can we bring it into awareness of what our spine is doing to help facilitate a squat position a little bit better? All right, everybody did their last one? Good, okay. We're gonna flip that over. On your back is much easier. We're gonna flip it over now into what we call our bear hold, our, our quadruped, okay? So when we do it, we wanna make sure that if I had the stick on my back, I'm not rounded, I'm not overextending, I'm in a nice three-point stack position. My toes, you know this position, we just worked on this, right? My toes are curled under, my hips are in line with my knees. If you're too far out, it's gonna be challenging. If you're too far in, it's easier. So let's just start general right now. My hands are under my shoulders and I'm pressing into my hands, my knees and my feet. So as I do that, I should feel like I'm growing stronger. Then what we're gonna do is use the same breathing technique. We're gonna inhale, exhale, just hover our knees off the ground. So we call our little bear raises or if you've taken my course and I put my nerd goggles on for you, I'm going from six points on the floor. So two hands, two knees, two feet to four points on the floor. All right, looks like this. So nice spinal position, nice active feet, no knees, uh, no ankles rolling in and out. Deep breath in. Hover here, make sure the rib cage doesn't move. Inhale at the top. Come down. Inhale again. Hover in the inhale. Exhale. Just kiss the ground, don't come crashing down. Two more guys, inhale, hover. So I'm not holding my breath here, I just inhale at the top, exhale, come down. Do one more, awesome. All right guys, 
do you start to feel how this three point stack is staying nice and stable? And now you can keep more pressure equally into your feet, maybe your hips, and because our hands are on the ground and our shoulders and hands. Everyone feel that? Good, okay. So we have 30 minutes left. I wanna stretch into the hips more, okay? Um, well, roughly, I don't know if it's exactly 30 minutes. We're gonna stretch into the hips more. So then we can bring our feet awareness, our spinal awareness, and our hip mobility into play. You can't really stretch into your hips before you understand spinal stability because if you're moving your spine all around in these stretches, right? If I'm asking you to stretch your hip flexor, so someone said their hips always feel tight here. So if I'm asking you to stretch your hip flexor and you don't keep this nice and solid and all you're doing is this and hyperextending your low back, well, you're never actually fully gonna get into that hip flexor. That's right? why all of this stuff is so important. You have to understand a three point stack. You have to understand what to do, how to align your pelvis, how to align uh, all three points. If not, just as Sarah pointed out, you're doing the exercise, but not getting anything from the exercise. Which, I mean, for all your time that you're working so hard at the gym to try and improve, or even at home with your movement snacks, if you're not aware of what you're doing, you're not gonna change anything, right? This is the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Well, if you're not getting a different result, it's either because you're not paying attention to how you're doing it, right? Or perhaps that is not working for you and you need to change it up. Um, and I will offer this, you are allowed to change your mind. It's part of evolution. You have every right to say, this isn't working, let me try something else. All right, we're gonna sit in our shin box position or 90-90 as some of you guys know it. However, I don't want people to go into 90 degrees if you need to contort your spine. So maybe it's gonna be a little more shallow. Maybe getting to the ground is really problematic for you so you have to sit up on a pillow. Maybe keeping a three-point stack in this way is really challenging so you can lean. And look, I'm still in a three-point stack. We're going to stretch external rotation and internal rotation first before extension and flexion because if your hips can't rotate properly, they won't get fully into flexion or into extension. Because every time we take a step, I know I'm <laughs> using my arms like this, but every time we take a step, our hips need to internally and externally rotate first when we squat, right? Internal to external. There's all these spiral effects in our body. And what's kind of cool is no bone in our body is exactly straight. Everything is a curve, right? So when we look at it, there is always going to be some curves to a movement. So this is where this comes in. So flex your feet like you're standing because you already know that lazy feet equal lazy hips. If we do these stretches right now, right, you flex your feet, you feel a little more support in that three-point stock, let your feet go. And weak sauce, right? So we're going to keep everything on, our three-point stock and our feet. What I want to do, and we could have spent more time rolling up the hips and everything. Don't worry, I have a gazillion things for you guys to do in future workshops. What we're going to do is think about coming into a deadlift position. So I'm going to push my bum back, right? I can use my hands to help deload, but I push my butt back to bring my chest to the floor. I don't round my back to do that. So pushing my bum back, we're going to go right in and out of this position, seeing how it feels, trying to drive the knee into the ground. I don't want this knee floating up. If your knee's not touching the ground, put a pillow under there or a towel, okay? So let's go for five, four, three, two, and one. Let's hold here for 10 seconds. So even if I'm passively holding, right, with my body weight coming down, I'm actively still driving my knee into the floor, taking some deep breaths. I'm actively pushing my hips back. I'm not rounding here. I'm thinking about my little plank position we just did. Awesome. So now what I'm going to ask you to do is drive the knee down even more because we're going to take our hands off the ground. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Place your hands on the ground again. Relax a bit lower into this. So sometimes I do this for 10, 20 seconds, right? You guys, we're going to start with five to 10 seconds. All right. So now we're getting a bit more into this position passively. Let's go active. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Even though we're resting, we're not losing our spinal position. Good. 10 seconds here. 
Last one. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Press up. Don't get out of this position. Don't move. Back leg is an internal rotation. I'm moving so you can see. I know. Don't call the movement police on me. So what I want to do is I don't want to just rotate my rib cage. I want to think about driving my knee this way and pulling my hip back. So can you see the difference between this and this? So I'm rotating everything, okay? Front knee has to stay down. So push it down and we're driving this one down too. It's a little tighter for some people here, right? We could have rolled the tissue up before. Um, we're flexing our feet up. We're driving the knee into the floor, okay? And we're hinging, same thing. So I'm not thinking about rounding my back. I'm thinking about pushing my bum backwards here. Let's go for 10. Nine. Oh my gosh. They said get a get a, a French bulldog, a shorty bull. He's he's a mutt. <laughs> um, wow, I've never heard anything snore quite so loud. <laughs> then two more. All right, let's hold. So we're gonna hold here again, thinking about driving the knees into the ground. And then when I say come up, we're gonna hover here. Try not to lift your torso. We're gonna lift and hold for five seconds. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, try to sit lower into this position, right? Remember, it's not just rotating from the rib cage, it's the whole hip, driving this knee forward. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and sink a bit lower. Drive this knee down. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Last one. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, put your hands behind you. Sit back and drop your knees from side to side here. Just shaking it up. So we're getting internal and external rotation here. Okay. If this area feels like it's the most problematic area for you, you'll probably want to tune into another one of my hip workshops where it's hips only. But today we are really um, exploring squat as a global movement, right? I'm addressing local joints in that, but we're gonna go back to that global movement after. Okay, switching sides, seeing if you can be in a better three-point stack or if you need to lean, it's up to you. We have a question. Okay. If things are super tight, sorry, I just mm -hmm. find an angle where I can read it. If things are super tight, would sitting on yoga blocks uh, in the 1990 be useful? Absolutely. So I don't know if you heard me before. I said you could sit on a pillow or a yoga block. So if I can't get to the floor, I bring the floor to me. I can put a yoga block under here. I like to do a towel because as you uh, get into the stretch, the towel's not so much help right? Um, but you need to bring the floor to you if you can't get to the floor. Um, you can sit your butt up on one of the yoga blocks and put another yoga block here. That's totally fine too. But we never force ourselves into positions because our body won't accept that. We try to romance them into the positions. I say that because in French. Okay, so let's go for our 10 movements here, pushing our hips back. Okay, making sure that our knees are um, at least supported if they're not on the floor and your spine is supported if it's not on the, uh, your hips are not on the floor. Good, so I lost count, so I'm gonna do five more. Four, three, two, all right, let's hold it down here. So holding this position, pulling our feet up even more, so getting a deeper stretch. Good, I even pull myself forward with my elbows as I push my hips back. Nice deep stretch here. Um, if you're feeling any compression, just uh, don't go as low if it's painful, right? And if you feel like this is just not for you, I have a bunch of other stretches we could have done this um, in an easy way. This way too is fine, that's external rotation. So it's totally up to you, like I said, there's a lot of different tools for a lot of different issues. I'm not dogmatic about anything. I'm just trying to help you guys understand the relationship between mobility, flexibility, and stability and how each joint does its own thing and they all work together. Okay, are we ready? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Hands down, good. Not so bad this time, because <laughs> you know what to expect. Good, deep breath in, <sighs> sinking lower into that stretch. Here we go, five, four. I'm still pulling myself forward, pushing my hips back. Three, two, one, good, relax, <sighs> but not completely. <sighs> good, getting ready for the last one. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, rotating towards the back. So again, if you feel that this knee comes way, way up, put a yoga block underneath there as we pull this knee forward and rotate towards the back. And we're going to do the same thing. Here we go for 10, nine, push your hip back. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and hold. So flex those feet, because if you let them go, look what happens. You don't have as much support, right? So flex those feet right up, drive those knees into the ground, all right? <clears throat> then we're gonna take our hands off, ready? Five, four, three, two, one, hands down. Try to get a little bit lower. Don't round your back. <clears throat> I saw you. You know. You. Ready? Here we go again. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Try to get a little deeper into the stretch. Drive this knee into the floor. Grow tall. Good. Last one. Five, four, Three, two, one. All right, rocking side to side here. So you can open up your legs as wide as you need to, rocking side to side. As you guys do that, I want you to do 10, right? I'm just showing you the possibilities of where this can go. So we can have hips extended here, hips flexed, that's what we did. And as I go side to side, I'm just gonna move my water here so I don't kick it over. As I go side to side, the wider I get, right, I'm basically just getting into a better position for my front splits or my middle splits, which is the expression of getting, working on those tighter hips. Does that make sense? Cool. So we're gonna do one last exercise to bring it all together for our feet, our hips, and our spine. We're gonna do what I typically give people first um, as their first type of squat, as long as they can place their hands on the floor. If you can't, hands on the wall is perfectly fine, but you're still gonna be on the balls of your feet. So I'm gonna show you the whole exercise. We call it the rocking bear, and you'll be able to see how I pull myself actually into the bottom of a squat. I never think about dropping down passively into the bottom of a squat. If I have load on me and I'm squatting and I let it passively go down, I'm not really gonna be active and coming up because I didn't load myself properly. So think about yourself like a catapult in this next exercise. If you want to be able to explode, right, you have to load it properly. So all the joints go, I build pressure, build pressure, build pressure, and then it can explode out of the bottom position. If I have one joint, let's say it's my foot and ankle here, and I'm loading everything else, Not everything's working together, so the catapult will not be as meaningful. So let me show you this rocking bear, okay? Again, your hands could be at the wall, and you're gonna be on the balls of your feet. I'll show you what that looks like right after. I'm going to get my three-point stack, use my breath, so I'm in this hover here. My knees are not on the ground. Step my hands out wider. I push myself with my legs into a plank, and then I push myself back into the bottom of my squat right, with my arms, so forward and back. My hands are slipping here a little bit, but at no point is my spine rounding or my feet getting lazy and my hips are shifting, so my Bermuda Triangle shouldn't be moving everywhere. So here we go. Inhale. Exhale. And then eventually you can do it on the inhale and the exhale. And you should feel equal amounts of pressure on all points that are on the ground. 
and it feels as if I'm pushing my upper body and pushing uh, towards my lower body and pushing my lower body towards my upper body. Are there questions about this one before we start? I'm gonna show you the wall variation. Um, I'll just use my fireplace here. So, and pardon me if I turn my back to you, my hands can be here and on the balls of my feet and I can still push up, squat down, push up, squat down. If you can, you can also just go flat, okay? So the balls of the feet is if you're like super, super new, um, then what you can do is go flat foot and I'm pushing down on the wall to get more lats and then I press up to the balls of my feet um, to push more upwards. So let's try to do five in total, but moving as slow as you can through this, making sure the knees are in nice alignment, making sure the ankles aren't flopping, making sure you're really pulling yourself into that squat. So I think about driving my knees towards my chest, right? I think about pushing myself deeper with my arms. So all of this nice stuff. Ready? Get yourself set up where you like to. I'm gonna go right here so you guys can see me. Okay, so a bit of a wire bear position here. Make sure you're not popping and locking your ribs. I know my shirt's a bit billowy here. You can see better like that. Good. Deep breath in. Okay, step the hands out a bit wider if you can, and you only go as far as you can. Pushing back. Forward. Back. Forward. So if you don't quite extend your legs and this is where you can keep your position, that's fine too. Two more guys. Oh, you feel this in your abs a bit. I always do sneaky abs. Ready? Last one. Awesome. Take a rest. Give yourself a COVID high five. How you feel? Did you, were you able to feel all those joints working together? That's really what we want to mimic when we squat. So we're not going to talk about this too much because we're going to get back up. I'm going to go back to our squats that we were trying to assess in the beginning, okay? Foot arches on. So there's my foot arches for you. It's also my Halloween hands, my thriller hands. Hands can be here in front mimicking, keeping our nice uh, body line position when we were doing our um, rocking bear just there, or hands can be overhead depending on what your range of motion is in your shoulders, just don't pop your ribs. And then we're gonna pull ourselves down into the bottom. Then we're gonna hold for one. Make sure those foot arches are on. Make sure you have a nice spine. See what's happening with the knees. Then push the floor away. Okay, let's do four more. Inhale here. Good. So I make you pause on the bottom to make sure you don't lose everything, especially in the feet. Two more. One more with our feet together. Let's see if we can get better range of motion through everything. Oh yeah, have five. <laughs> awesome guys. Thanks for joining me this morning. Um, I know that this is just a little tip of the iceberg. There's so many questions you have. Please ask them in our Facebook forum. You can also post them uh, below in this video. Yeah. That, that might be the easiest thing for right now. Okay, Sean's going to join us on screen. You guys must be important. All right. So uh, <laughs> I would say post uh, your questions right below in this video. Also, next month we are going to do another workshop like this on our YouTube channel. It's going to be kettlebell related. So I have some ideas of things that I'd like to share that will help you fix. I know a lot of people, especially these days, are working out at home and maybe you don't have uh, proper supervision. For those of you who are joining us every week uh, in the Agatsu Online Gym, I know you're getting coaching, you're getting feedback, so that's awesome. For those of you who are not, I wanna do something helpful. So what we'll do is a little workshop to fix some of the common kettlebell problems. Uh, so I wanna hear from you. 
I want to know what your problems are. Are you getting slammed and smashed and bashed every time you try and do a clean and press? Um, we can work on the clean. Are you having troubles with your swing? Maybe feeling a little something in the back. What if we're not feeling be? appreciated? If you're not feeling appreciated, yeah, I that's I, my problem. I but then I, that's horrible. Thanks. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I was like broken heart. What what can we help you fix? Then? Yeah. Well, the, maybe we'll keep the workshop to kettlebell stuff. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, kettlebell <laughs> things. Post them below if you have questions about the squat workshop. Obviously, post them below, and we will answer right here. If you want to see something specific for next month on kettlebell technique. Then also post that below. Or and, mobility. Or mobility. And, uh, but the kettlebell workshop is coming up next month. So let's do Under that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've heard uh, heavy presses help a broken heart. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. He yes. You were so right, Jeremy. <laughs> yes. Let, lifting heavy anything will help with that. Um, the other thing, too, is if you haven't See, done iron it. iron is good for the heart. If you haven't done it already, then you should subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, you are going to miss all of this good stuff, and you won't be able to hear dogs snoring on while you're trying to train. So make sure that you like and subscribe after uh, we are all done here. That's awesome. Yeah, there is going to be more uh, Carolyn's coming for sure. Okay, so keep an eye out. If you subscribe to the channel, then you definitely won't miss anything because you're going to see and you'll get updates and all that good stuff. Uh, if you need more info of the Agatsu online gym, you can shoot us a message. We're happy to answer. Also, you can post your questions, comments, and everything else here. And we hope you guys enjoyed it. We hope everyone has a happy Halloween. Uh, stay safe, have fun, and uh, everyone try to be positive. I know it's a crazy rough time. So you did good work today. Everyone, COVID high five. Good stuff. Remember, post your questions. Anything that you guys need to know, we're happy to help. Okay? Bye, guys. Bye-bye.